what's up guys, CP Modder here back with another video. Today we're here with this month's PC build. Now usually we do our PC months to PC builds rather at the end of the month, uh, but today we're changing things up a little bit. Now in today's PC build, I've been challenged by one of you guys to build a system on Amazon without using any bundles and doing it as cheaply as possible. So basically no bundles as cheaply as possible, this really can't be going that well. Now usually our PC part builds are a great way to go ahead and sort of get an idea of what to build as a system, though with that being said, today's system you probably don't really want to build. But nevertheless, let's jump into it with the CPU of choice. So the CPU that we did pick up was the AMD Sempron 2650 APU running at 1.45 GHz and the rest of the specifications do really speak for themselves. There's not really that much here, but it did cost us only $34.95. Now the reason why we picked these up is again mainly because we can't get a bundle. There's definitely cheaper motherboard and CPU pre-soldered BGA arrangements on the market already that would be about $34, but part of the challenge was not to use any bundle deal kind of thing, so we went with an individual CPU itself. Then for the motherboard that we picked up, we grabbed ourselves the ECS Elite Group KAM1-I Revision 1.0 Socket AM1 motherboard, which just like the CPU is pretty sparse and made by a company, well, that I've never actually heard of before and didn't even know they were in business. It was cheap, it was $32.49 and overall should allow us to connect some things together. How long Jevony will go and what kind of connections it's got is a little bit debatable, but at the end of the day, it is a motherboard and that is exactly what we needed. Now, RAM choice was one of those ones that I actually had to take a step up over the cheapest ones available because we are running a very old APU at this point and an AM1 socket motherboard, there is no DDR4 support. So the cheapest DDR3 stick that I could find was actually $1.30, but I couldn't exactly use that because it would not reach the minimum requirements to even install Windows. Sure, if you're spending this little on a PC, you're probably gonna be going with a Linux build or some sort of other version of like Steam OS or something like that, uh, but at the end of the day, I did wanna actually have it, so if you did have a copy of Windows kicking around, maybe you had a laptop or something, you could theoretically load it up on the system. So we had to step up just a little bit and go with the ATEC Samsung 4GB DDR3 module. This guy is again one of those companies I've never actually heard of, although Samsung sounds pretty familiar, but at the end of the day it only cost us $4.52, which wasn't half that bad, but it was $3 more than the cheapest stick we could have gone with. But 4GB should get you by with some sort of mid-range low-end games and definitely will allow us to install Windows. However, with that being said, we're only using one DIMM slot, so that means if we want to upgrade this thing, we can theoretically throw another $4 of the build, grab ourselves another 4 gigs of RAM, and thus we have 8 gigs of RAM. But that was our RAM of choice. Storage wise was another terrible situation. I really did want to go with a brand new drive for this build, but unfortunately there wasn't one for the price point that we needed it at. So we grabbed ourselves a Seagate Barracuda 160 gigabyte drive, which was a refurb running at 7200 RPM with two megs of cache. This is certified refurbished, but at the end of the day, it still is a refurbished drive. So it's just another one of those parts in this system that could potentially fail. Don't get me wrong, certified refurbished drives aren't half that bad and I actually run one of them uh, in my system so I can't really uh, have a go with them too much and it's definitely lasted me quite some time but uh, that was our mass storage drive. As for SSDs, there was none of them so we didn't exactly pick one up. In terms of the case, that was actually one of the only components that I didn't mind the look of too much for the price that we paid. We grabbed ourselves the Rosewall Micro ATX Mini Tower Computer Case, Office Computer Case with 180mm fan. It has a really terrible name, but only cost us $23.99, and overall for a cheap budget case that's definitely going to be made out of plastic, it doesn't look too bad. Sure, it's no super high and flashy case from Corsair or any of the other guys like that, but at the end of the day, if it's going to be put under your desk, you're not really going to be noticing it too much. And because it's got 180mm fan, hey, we don't have to buy a fan. Now, speaking of fans, we did also to pick up a power supply, and this guy actually has two fans on it, so basically we don't need to add any extra cooling fans to this rig. The power supply we did grab was the Logsys Corp 400W power supply, which is super kind of really dodgy there. It has two fans on it, and why it has two fans, I don't exactly know. I do remember working at a PC store for a little bit of time, and there was a sort of bunch of power supplies, they were all dead, and I remember quite a few of them actually had uh, dual, uh, dual fans on them. And I talked to the person who owned the store and they said uh, the reason why they had dual, uh, dual fans on the power supplies was because they were so inefficient and kicked out so much heat 
that they needed two fans to cool them. Now, whether or not that is the case, uh, well, we can tell that this guy is really not going to be anything special. The two fans, sort of cool, but at the end of the day, I would really not even want to even buy this thing, let alone put it in our system. But it cost us $18.99, and just from a safety standpoint, whilst it is in this build, I really strongly recommend against buying this guy because there is a high chance it may blow up, taking out the rest of your system, but more importantly, it could potentially shock you and that's really not what you want. Honestly, whilst this whole idea of the build is being cheap, just for a second, we do need to keep in mind electricity is dangerous, so when you are buying a power supply, try not to cheap out. But for the sake of this build, we spent $18.99 on it. And that's about it for the system. The box is all together. The system should run. If you want to grab yourself a copy of Windows, you can basically spend the entire price you just spent on the actual system on the copy of Windows, or grab yourself Linux, which is another great option. Linux is definitely getting a lot better in recent months. Uh, but that is the system there. However, you definitely need some peripherals, so we spent about $60 to $59 on the extra peripherals. We grabbed ourselves the Amazon Basics 3-button USB mouse. We also too grabbed ourselves a Verbatim, I believe that's how you pronounce it, slim keyboard, and also to the Dell E17 8 FP monitor. This is a 17-inch 4x3 monitor for just $48.88. Now, with that being said, if I did really want to cheap out a little bit, we could have gone with this particular Dell monitor that came in at $3 and something cents. The reason why I didn't pick it up is because it wasn't necessarily something everyone could buy. Everything on this part list, you can go on Amazon, and as long as it's still in stock with Amazon, you can go ahead and buy. However, the $3 monitor was a used item being sold on Amazon, so we won't really do that there. However, if you jump on eBay, Gumtree, or Craigslist, or any of the other sort of variants of people selling sites, you could probably grab yourself for a monitor for about one or two dollars there. But at the end of the day, we spend about 50 to 60 dollars on our extra peripherals. And with that being said, we can sit down in front of our computer and hopefully load up Minesweeper. Honestly, the built-in graphics on the CPU isn't really going to be doing you any favors, and really probably will be lucky to play things like Pac-Man and Minesweeper, thanks to its super low-end specs. However, with that being said, throwing in something like a GTX 1030, whilst I really don't recommend buying that video card, for a system of this price point, I think the 1030 would be a massive upgrade. We've checked out the 1030 in many videos, which can be popped up here, and also to will pop up here, uh, basically seeing what kind of performance you do get out of this super low-end card. And I have to say, for a system that is low-end like this, a 1030 would be a great pairing with the guy. You should be able to play most games on sort of low settings, uh, thanks to the CPU being fairly low-end, but at the end of the day, it is somewhat of a capable system. Maybe you're throwing together an office build, this also too would be great for that, as it can definitely type up some Word documents, but overall, at the end of the day, we spent a massive total, as I do scroll down right here, we spent a total of $191.63 shipped to our door if we lived in the US. Now, this is in US dollars. However, if I wanted to get it shipped over here to Australia, we'll be spending $267.30 thanks to the cheapest PO box to repack a seller that I could find on the internet. Whilst it isn't the cheapest to get it here to Australia, if you live in the States, it's not a half bad deal. So overall, that is my super low-cost Amazon PC build. At the end of the day, I strictly recommend nobody building this because there's so much more you could get if you just threw an extra one or two hundred dollars at the system, and it would be such more capable and reliable type of system. The reliability, the capabilities of the system really aren't worth that $191. So at the end of the day, whilst we could potentially do it, I really don't recommend building a sub $200 PC. But let me know down in that comment sections, do you think it's valuable? Do you want me to go ahead and build this system and benchmark it and see what we could actually get if I could get the parts here in Australia. Nevertheless, guys, thanks for watching. And if you want to check out this PC part list, I've linked as much as I can down in that comment, uh, down in the description box, rather. Nevertheless, thanks for watching once again, and I'll catch you all in the next one.